Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> beautiful. We've got a beautiful deep session today, but we actually, for some of you who follow along on the uh, lessons, like Frank was talking about yesterday, um, today's lesson, if you follow along in the calendar year, is workbook lesson 307. But instead of reading the lesson, I'm just going to read the title of the lesson, and then I'm going to play a song and have two amazing performers and deeply devoted uh, students of the course from years ago. I'm going to have them sing it to you with their beautiful harmonies, so you'll get the lesson in the most glorious, angelic way possible to still your mind before our beautiful session today. So the title of workbook lesson number 307 from A Course in Miracles is Conflicting Wishes Cannot Be My Will. And as I shared yesterday, God created free will for Christ, but human beings don't have free will because when the mind is asleep and split, it's listening to two voices, the ego and the Holy Spirit. And yet, here's our lesson, conflicting wishes cannot be my will. It can't be that we have two wills. We have only one. And Christ is showing you that way. So, let's listen to Oman and Shanti. Thank you for joining us. We are going to follow through as we said. You know, our purpose is the only choice with, with guidance and practical examples and as many examples as, as we need to start to clarify this and 
Oh my gosh, the emails we've received and the on Facebook, Muna, your post in the Unwind Your Mind group today. Oh, it's so delightful. We're just Seema writing in, Kristen, it's just the we're, the reflections are so amazing that really even the movie showed us that Jesus is with us in our mind and what we think is an external world is not really external. But Jesus is just, as Muna said, she's just Jesus is just reconfiguring our mind to experience the quantum field, the forgiven world, the happy dream. And that's so beautiful because it takes the pressure off of trying to think, what should I do? What should I not do? How do I behave? How do I do the right thing? You know, all those stressful questions that come around and around in our mind. And Jesus is saying, what you do comes from what you think, so it's with your thoughts alone that I must work. I'm working with your thoughts, I'm working with your belief, I'm working in your mind. I'm showing you this is entirely a mind healing. It has nothing at all to do with the world, because the world is not outside of your mind. The ideas leave not their source. Just like Christ has never left the mind of God, the Christ idea, the beautiful, pure, perfect, innocent Christ idea still, as always, res resides in the eternal mind of God. Even with this world, the world is not outside of your mind. That's what quantum physics is showing. There is no world apart from what you think. Jesus says it in Lesson 132. He says it three times in Lesson 132. There is no world, he says in Lesson 132. He's teaching us that it's all our thoughts and all we have to do is change our thinking and we are home free and always have been home free. But we are aware that we're home and free when we allow our mind to, to spring back into the quantum field, the total interconnectedness of mind. So today, springing off the session from yesterday and the movie, we are here to uh, have interactions with you, to show by examples, and uh, there's so many things we, we want to share in this, uh, this two-hour segment, but um, I'm actually feeling uh, uh, our two from uh, Holland are good examples of this because um, mm. you had an interaction over there uh, which which was of, of yeah. someone who was having a big project, big project, big project. that seemed to be a very large project with, with the government Holland. and Holland and the canal system and everything. And, and he, through listening to, at, in Holland, started to realize that he could listen to Spirit and have Jesus guide him in the project. And then sitting next to him is, is a woman who is using skills and her connection with spirit in sculpture, like a public sculpture project. And uh, we thought we would lead off with both of you uh, as, as an example of how following the spirit is, is about the connection to spirit and, and the spirit clarifying and, and healing the mind. And then the spirit can use anything as a backdrop. You don't have to be sitting with flowers around your neck, uh, dressed in white, and uh, alming and chanting, uh, you can actually have your awakening through just listening and following in, in, in terms of projects. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I had an interaction with you, Theo, at the end of Holland Retreat, and um, I cannot express how much I was touched by that small encounter and uh, I actually have been wanting to write to you ever since, so I'm very glad that you both are here. But I just feel like um, it is in the practicality, it is in something that we can do on a daily basis, that we started to bring this purpose back to Jesus. <clears throat> you know, he actually said in the Course that we, I will not ask you to do something that's hard. So if this course in any way is feeling difficult, 
then we have to see it is not probably Jesus's course we have been following. <laughs> it, G- ego is very hard. Ego's purpose is very hard to to pursue in this world because it does not bring up this sense of purpose, this meaning. So I feel like, you know, in in everything, once we give our purpose back to the spirit, it's not so much to say, okay, I will now quit doing everything in this world. That is a symbol of leaving behind everything and I'm just going to meditate my way back. Actually, it is in the willingness to give our life and everything in it back to be used for the purpose of the spirit. So I feel like that's that's the 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 joining point that we have here. And um, yeah, just wondering whether you guys want to share a little bit because you you actually wrote in this beautiful question, um, Marian. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I'm touched. You want to tell me about the project? <laughs> yeah, each one can just share a little bit about how you've been inspired. Yeah. And how you've, you've tapped into this, uh, tuning into your guidance and listening and following. Because many people think that when the Course says, I need to do nothing, and when the, the Course says, you just have to change your mind, that they, they just sit with their body in, in their house, and they think, uh, this, it's going to happen. In fact, a, f- a friend of mine, Lisa Natoli, said for decades, she just did nothing. And she had no sense of, of joy and, and it took her a while before things started to break up down and fall apart before she actually started really tuning into those inner prompts and listening and following. And you both are, are such inspiring examples that we just met you in Holland. So we would love to hear just about your tuning in and listening to that inspiration because uh, you wrote in this morning that you had left the church uh, and then and and also we know that there was time of, of questioning, is this of Jesus? And you both are such shining examples of, of authentically connecting with that spirit that we would love to, to just hear your inspirations around that. Well, thank you. Shall I eerst iets with that? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I, I start. Um, well, <clears throat> uh, we've read your book. Uh, uh, this summer and yeah. and uh, then your retreat was in Holland and Theo uh, could uh, join but I had a project and I could feel uh, that I had to uh, do the project because of the spirit um, and, and all the otherwise I I would f- follow your retreat because I feel longing to to join the retreat but I felt, no, it's not okay. I have to do my project. And my project um, is a kind of helping people feel the crack in reality. Uh, it is my lifetime. I'm hit by quantum mechanics. I'm a sculptor and um, I'm interested in the empty room between the things. And all is connected. Um, so my project was very, in a kind of way, very difficult and a challenge because uh, there was no, um, how do you call, somebody gives me the, um, somebody said, you have to do this. No, there was no nobody. You, I, you I, were inspired. I just felt I have to do this. And then there were a lot of um, moments. I thought, this is so difficult, I quit. And I asked it, the Holy Spirit, can I go on? Help me, otherwise I will stop. I give it to you, all the thing. And then in a wonderful way, there, there were wonders with people. 
wonders with people, not with material. That was actually a bit simple, but with the people. And well, I cannot tell what the real meaning is of the project because people, we had a meeting on the street and they go away. But I felt afterward that it is good to give, to give away, to share, to, yeah, in the way, in the way like this. Oh, so sweet, so sweet, so simple and sweet. Here you are, you you've couldn't fit into the box of, of traditional churches, but you, you still kept questioning and questioning, and it took you all into quantum mechanics, and you're looking for the crack in reality, and yesterday during the session I'm talking about the crack. Come on, let's get, <laughs> let's go through the crack. We've got to go through the crack. And you, yes. sweetly, you, you're sharing how you I are... Yes, he, <laughs> he <fails> the crack. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So <laughs> that will help with the canal system too, I'm sure. <laughs> that, that crack will come in handy. <laughs> okay, and Theo, share from what, what's going on for you. I, yeah. I, I, at the end of the, the session uh, in Holland, I, I met you a moment and uh, uh, embraced you. It's a very uh, emotional moment that I can. Yeah, and after after that, I I, I said to you, Francis, uh, 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 Francis to Francis, I told her <laughs> about about my about my project in Utrecht. I'm busy there now for thirty three years, and that's the same period you were busy, uh, David, with the course. So you were talking about 33 years, and I thought when you said that in the, that week from, oh yes, but what, what's happening now? Eh? I'm 30 years busy with my new my church in, in Utah, the, the new church for, and the, I don't know the curses then, eh? that's, that's the last eight years. Uh, that's a story on, on its own, it's not for now. But 30 years, I get an idea on a hidden place on the center in Utrecht, under the Dam Square, the Dam Tower, and the, and the church, uh, a hidden place with Roman rests. And I stand, and I, st I stood there, and I get a, a vision. To, 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 when it's when it's when it should be possible to make an underground layer under the Dam Square, under Utrecht, under Holland, then you can walk, and when you walk there, you come. To the rest of the first church of Willibert. I'm like you, uh, Christian, very Christian uh, uh, roots. roots. And, and, and I thought, I get the idea from when, uh, when I can make that center, then we can go underground, seven layers in the time, and eh? first Romans, then 700, the start of Christianity in Holland. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, vervolgen, and then maybe we can make a center where where we can make a community community where people come together from all the beliefs. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. this Moroccan uh, uh, boys, I went with them to their center in North uh, Morocco. Yeah? This in Utrecht, the, the Moroccan Moroccan uh, boys. I said, you see here our Castellum, Roman Castellum, but do, do you know, you have also a Castellum. I went with them to them Castellum in North Africa, in Morocco. And I have an idea that, that, that I'm now further, the, 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 the first big center is opened mid, in the middle of the square. And now the next one, that's, that's, that's Willibert. And now I'm, I'm searching and I'm looking but I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I ask the Holy Spirit every day who I have to meet, uh, who I have to meet. And, mm. and, and then I, I met people and I see then the, the day later, I see someone three times in a week. I think, ah, that's a sign. I have to met him. 
And that's the way of working after I learned the course, of course, because the, the 25 years uh, before. before I was working, working so hard on this project. And now I'm not more working. I'm, I'm, I'm 70 now. And I, I will now, with the course, pray, listen, and follow. Uh, and that is... Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's so beautiful. 70 years, and now it's really dawning in your mind, like, this and, is it. This is and, the way. And I asked, and I asked and when I, I met someone, I asked, what, what for you will be Willy Brot 2.0 now? Eh? What, what, what's, what's his purpose eh? in, the, in, in the way of this, this weekend? What's his purpose? To, to make connections. No, no, no yeah. differences anymore. Yeah, huh? yeah, and yeah. That meeting place underground of, in on the place what for me is the soul of Utrecht and Holland. Yeah, I feel I have to make I I I, I have to make it wish. The Holy Ghost. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for sharing that because. This is the, what we're really looking at now is the examples. And, and we have to say we had such a spectacular time over there in Holland at the castle. We loved meeting you. We love all these orchestrated count, encounters where everyone who's to meet will meet. And since I've come back, uh, Jesus had me on the internet. I shared this with Francis. but. Um, Right. There's going to, we decided, we prayed, and we're going to have a, a, a retreat called Awakening to Love from uh, August 3rd to August 9th over at our monastery in Utah. And Jesus said, look at this. And he said, there's going to be a huge Awakening Europe Jesus Celebration Festival in Rotterdam uh, that's going to be the 28th of... Uh, of July to the 2nd of August, right before it, it ends the day before uh, we begin our retreat, and where people, where it says all the missionaries were sent out from Europe all over the globe, 110 countries, and now they're being called back to Europe. So I heard all these, in the video, all these different people going, come back to Europe, in all the different languages, to celebrate this awakening uh, really, that Jesus is helping us all with. So, uh, thank you both for what you're doing, and we're going to spring into all kinds of examples, like both of you are showing today, about how we can be just opening to the connections and just following and going with those connections so that our minds can feel completely healed. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, even with um, the last retreat, when we finished the retreat, we were just literally finishing the morning, and there was nothing in our minds about the future. And then everybody came to us and saying, what about next year, same week, same place next year? And we were <laughs> hit by all of those signs and symbols, and we didn't know what to think. So we were like, let's just uh, check with the castle, because the castle was so popular, they are completely booked out. And the castle said, we reserved the same week for you next year. We were like, you reserved for us? Did we request that? No, you didn't. You actually, he said, when we booked it this year, they specifically asked, is that a repeating event? And our answer was no. It's a one-off. They reserved anyways. <laughs> so that was, that's like how we have that exact opening. So this is like how we truly know that, you know, it's not, it's not us who make any decisions. And uh, Jesus is making it very loud and very clear. And that's, that's what we're following. And it's very, yeah. very effortless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perhaps next year we'll end up with three or four hundred people <laughs> up there at the yeah. castle uh, so celebrating our oneness. Let them come with any belief system. Let them come like your system. Come together and rejoice together in the oneness of love. 
uh, and lay aside all belief and differences because that's that's really what we're celebrating. You know, we're not celebrating Christianity or Buddhism or Hinduism. We're not celebrating the paths. We're actually celebrating the experience of love, of unconditional love that we all are, that we all share, and that's worth celebrating. We can let theology start to fade away. We can let our pathways, even our concepts of pathways, we can start to let that fade away because as Krishnamurti said, truth is a pathless land. Truth is an experience, as Jesus says, that cannot be described or explained. Only experience. experience. So thank you. We're here to share that experience of love, unconditional love. And we may use names like Holy Spirit and Jesus, but we're talking about the one love of, of the Creator, of the, of the Source, of Spirit. And, and that's, that's the glory of this. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good way to kick it up. <laughs> okay, well, what should we go to next? There's so much. We've had emails come in. We've had so much. Yeah, and I feel like, because this morning I um, woke up and I was scrolling down uh, Facebook, and I stopped at this one post just kind of prompted me, because someone put together the, the different passages, five passages together about the Holy Spirit's use of the body, and I thought, how relevant, because, because in the last couple of days, really, the, the, the things that we want to share and, and the Spirit wants to share is the power of the mind so that we realize that we can do it. If we keep seeing the power external to ourselves, then we gonna continue to feel powerless no matter what. But the only reason we keep the bring the power back to the mind and emphasize nothing but that is just to point to this solution. The solution is something at the grasp of our own hands. We can change we can change our own mind. Nobody else can change it. And if all problem, all problem is, it only exists in our own mind, then we can change everything. That is really the central message. And it's so practical and so simple. But first of all, we have to embrace this. We have to stop giving the power over and keep using our mind for, for, to reinforce that our power is not our our own, so I I just thought that is what this purpose is the only choice. What is Jesus wanting to tell us? Because realizing that, then we know where to find the solution. But I thought maybe um, I can read a little bit yeah. about this this particular um, post that I read this morning, because it it does bring clarity. Okay, I have to find it's it. It's from the Course, and this is Jesus directly speaking, uh, because Francis alluded to it on, on Friday night, that the Holy Spirit only sees the body as a, as a communication device. And so this is like, that's almost like a note in the symphony, and now Francis would like to share more of the symphony from Jesus, yeah. directly from Jesus, because that, that is the most amazing thing. So just uh, there, there are five different passages from the Course, uh, pretty short, but bear with me. So I will just read them. The body can become a sign of life, a promise of redemption, and the breath of immortality. To those grown sick of breathing in the f fetid sense of, scent of death, let it have healing as its purpose capital. Then will it send forth the message it received, and by its health and loveliness proclaim the truth and value that it represents. Let it receive the power to represent an endless life, forever unattacked. And to your brother let this message be, Behold me, brother, at your hand I live. Now in the hands made gentle by His touch, capital H. The Holy Spirit lays a picture of a different you. 
It is a picture of a body still, for what you really are cannot be seen or pictured. But this one has not been used for purpose of attack, and therefore never suffers pain at all. It witnesses to the eternal truth that you cannot be hurt, and points beyond itself to both your innocence and his. Show this unto your brother, who will see that every scar is healed, and every tear is wiped away in laughter and in love, and he will look on his forgiveness there, and will heal eyes, and with healed eyes, will look beyond it, to the innocence that he beholds in you. Here is a proof that he has never sinned, the nothing that his madness bid him. His madness bid him do was never done, or ever had effects of any kind. That no reproach he laid upon his heart was ever justified, and no attack can touch him with the poisoned sting of fear. Attest his innocence and not his guilt. Your healing is his comfort and his health, because it proves illusions were not true. The central lesson is always this: that what you use the body for, it will become to you. Use it for sin or for attack, which is the same as sin. You will see it as sinful. Because it is sinful, it is weak, and being weak, it suffers and it dies. Use it to bring the word of God to those who have it not. And the body becomes holy, because it is holy. It cannot be sick, nor can it die. When its usefulness is done, it is laid by, and that is all. The mind makes this decision, as makes all decisions that are responsible for the body's condition. Yet the teacher of God does not make this decision alone. To do that would be to give the body another purpose, from the one that keeps it holy. God's voice will tell him when he has fulfilled his role, just as it tells him what his function is. Mm. So, just one one more thing. Yet this protection needs to be preserved by careful watching. If you let your mind harbor attack thoughts, yield to judgment, or make plans against uncertainties to come, you have again misplaced yourself and made a bodily identity which will attack the body, for the mind is sick. Give instant remedy. Should this occur, by not allowing your defensiveness to hurt you longer.、Mm. Very simply, the resurrection is the overcoming or surmounting of death. It is a reawakening or rebirth, a change of mind about the meaning of the world. It is the acceptance of the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the world's purpose. The acceptance of the atonement for oneself. It is the end of dreams of misery, and the glad awareness of the Holy Spirit's final dream. It is the recognition of the gifts of God. It is the dream in which the body functions perfectly, having no function except communication.、Mm. Wow, that's so powerful. Because I think. That's giving us now. We're getting like the keys to the kingdom. We're getting the keys to purpose is the only choice because that last part that Francis read it sounded like lesson one thirty five workbook lesson about if you make plans for the future, you have again made a bodily identity, and that is probably one of the most core things that we can emphasize. If if purpose is in the mind. And purpose is in this present moment, and purpose is the only choice. Then, even making plans for the future are involving the ego's 
self-concept and that will again reinforce a bodily identity in your mind. And your purpose is to wake up to spirit, is to loosen from, disengage from that bodily identity. Let the spirit laugh and sing and speak and hug and shine and radiate through the body so that you can loosen your mind's identification with the body. In fact, there's a part too in the course, in the middle of the text, where basically Jesus says, he says, at no single instant does the body exist at all. It is always remembered or anticipated. You hear that? It's like he's saying, at no single instant, this holy instant that you give over to Jesus and Spirit perfectly, you will lose awareness of the body. You know, when, like when you're playing or you're engaged in something that's so joyful, you actually lose awareness of the body. You could be, you could be running, uh, or you could be singing, or you could be sitting, or cooking, or doing one of any other things. It doesn't matter what the body seems to be doing, but you lose awareness. And this relates, you know, when we've been talking with Holly, we were talking about uh, the future, the PhD, and the relationship, and everything coming at once, and it getting more and more intense, like I can't manage this, I can't handle this. This is the underpinnings underneath why we have to trust in the Spirit to guide us in all things. You have the Holy Spirit with you now, you have Jesus. And when you hand it over and you say, Whatever's good for the whole of the universe, bring it to me, show me. Uh, everybody knows that, that a PhD even is a symbol, and of course uh, that symbol seems to bring with it a paycheck. You go from a stipend, <laughs> a, student, a student stipend, to a full paycheck. To the world that seems like a worthy goal, you know. That's why I was saying you don't stay at McDonald's flipping burgers for 25 years because you might be able to do some other things that, that help you pay the bills. But what if the Holy Spirit is saying, I'll handle everything, I'll handle absolutely everything with your, your body, your world, everything. If you'll give your mind to me, I will take care of everything and you don't have to be concerned about the future. That goes against all of our programming. Mm. Why was I in university for 10 years? Why did Frances have her own business? Why do, did I put all... I, I even have a degree, a bachelor's degree in urban planning. It's giving up planning in the, in the name of the degree. I have a bachelor's degree in urban planning and then Jesus is laughing as he gets a hold of my mind going, oh boy, we got a planner here. <laughs> <laughs> we got a slow learner, a planner, because the whole profession was designed on the future. And he says, I want you to, to trust in me, let present trust and confidence lead the way. So I think what we do need though is examples. I mean, I know for you, Holly, we both had the same thing. We needed lots of examples and lots of demonstrations to show that this was actually possible. And then another thing that came to mind today was uh, our beloved friend Seema, who's a medical doctor, right. who wrote in to me today. And Seema has been following along and joined with us so deeply for so long. And she's been a medical doctor. She's loosened from the, the medical a bit where she was using other kind of the mind and alternative healing in combination with the medical symbols and then she moved into coaching and so now she's coaching people on on awakening and and now today Seema you wrote in this beautiful email where you were starting to get activated this weekend and, and before for writing stories these deep stories that have touched your life like my friend Dale in prison you, you mentioned who, who got a hold of, of some of my books and, and has now written his own book and he's freeing his mind while his body is still in prison for years to come. He's, he's freeing his mind because his body is not 
imprisoning. So I just want you as an example here for Holly and for all of us just to share a bit about actually your new inspiration because I'm very excited about how the Spirit will use your storytelling ability as remedies, as inspirations to help people light up and, and the stories will point them to the spirit within themselves. I would love to hear your inspiration. Um, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, well, I, I, I've just been really um, captivated by, like when, uh, David, when you were talking about um, the, in, in the hurricane re movie review about Dale and his experiences, and then recently I've been reading this book about Mary Magdalena and um, stories within stories. Um, and then I, I watched just the um, the power of the heart that you had referenced in the um, Holland retreat and the story of that woman in Rwanda. And there was something just like so powerful about stories. And um, I, I it's it's funny um, when I was like sixteen, seventeen is. Well, I, I, there's a whole story about how I became a doctor, but it had a lot to do with, with my parents and my father. Um, you know, I, I tell this story in, in the book that I'm writing about where I was literally born and he pronounced that I'd become a doctor. So I kind of, <laughs> I kind <Huh>? of lived, <laughs> I kind of lived out that story because I, you know, I, I loved him and I loved my parents and being in the Indian tradition, but I always wanted to be a writer. Like that's what was always in my heart. So so now um, I'll, I'll just feel this inspiration and I'll just be on Facebook and I'll just, just put something in and it, it'll come together like, like effortlessly, like I'm not trying to think or whatever. And then people will respond, oh, this was helpful or thank you for sharing that. And it just feels so joyful, like there's not a thinking and yet there's healing. And, and I know my, my true desire, um, even when I was um, practicing medicine, it was always healing. Like, how can I be helpful? Um, how can I, you know, be of service here to this family in this time? And, you know, when I leave the room, I, I want them to feel better than when I entered. Like, I just, I just want that. So, so yesterday I was transcribing notes from the, the retreat. And as I shared in the email, I, I was listening and I was like, okay, David said this and Francis said this. And suddenly it was all, and then there was stuff coming in and I just was like, whoa, this is like, what's happening like it was like this such a joining that um as i shared with you david i almost had this fear come up like what's going on like i'm being possessed or something it just was really weird and i literally had to step away because it was just too um I, I don't know it was I, I and then i just thought about helen and when she was scribing and you know the fear and i i guess i never understood that but now i could see like wow um meaning i i just became aware of the fear so, um, so I, I just feel like, okay, here I go again. Like I came to, I, I feel like I've lived many lives in this one lifetime with all the seeming incarnations I've had with different things I've done. And now it's like, okay, here we go again. I, I don't know what this ride is going to look like, but, um, um, but, but it feels like, yeah, I want to do this. Like I want to share these stories because they, they uplift me, especially this, this woman in Rwanda and being in this bathroom, I'm like, wow, people have to hear this, you know, and, and what does that mean? Will they not like find the book on their own? I have no idea, but, but it just touched me. And I feel like it just is like, until I share it, it's like something is there and it needs to be given, you know, it just feels like it, it has to go and where it goes and where it lands and where it doesn't land. You know, I'm, I'm really learning. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be, but I, I keep coming back to, okay, is it healing for me? Like, does that feel healing for me? And I'm, I'm grateful for Frances and her example with the movie and coming back to that reference point. Is it, is it healing for me? So um, thank you. That's, that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank so you, Seema. Beautiful. That you reinforce the, what we just talked about, about you don't have to know, you don't actually have to plan out the future, mm. which is so counter to everything that the ego conditions us. It says the past is real and you better use the past to plan and project your future, otherwise you're in trouble. And it skips over the present moment and you're just tuning in with your guidance to read this book, Mary Magdala, to read 
this and that. To, you know, you're really showing and demonstrating what we're talking about. That mm. you need to tap into that, even if your past history in Indian tradition, you know, and and you're pronounced the doctor on the day you're born, and you play it out out of duty, out of duty and loyalty and devotion and love, and now you're just awakening. And, and allowing yourself to let go of how the future will even look. So to me, that's yeah. very, very much of a witness. That's beautiful because, you know, Jesus did say that in, in the practical aspect of, of it all is that our mind is not made to protect by planning. Our, this is not the right use of our mind. Our mind is not made to attack, to judge situations and to to plan. So, but how how do we live if we don't plan? And that's exactly what we're here to to share. That is possible. And I feel like nothing is more compelling than than a life that's lived that way. To show it is possible to not plan, and our mind is made for communion and is made just to to be with this love and in this love and by calling. Jesus to guide us. That is how we stay in that love, and then just, just to see how everything unfolds. But it just become completely retranslated, and I feel like you know it's a it's a huge transition from being a medical doctor. And I actually, um, you know, from the questions and emails, I, I notice there are quite a few um, of the people here. The participants are PhDs, university teachers. Teacher of some different kinds, um, they're like you know it's very established in 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 the way the career um, is established in this world, but yeah, Jesus is saying doesn't matter. I I can retranslate if you if we dare to let the inspiration or the guidance lead the way, then give our mind completely to this priority of just being with Him. Then that is the right use of our mind. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is, too, a lot of times people tell me this as I traveled around the world. They go, "You really are happy. I I didn't know if I met you in person if you'd be as joyful and happy. You you really do sing and you laugh and you are having so much fun and you're like childlike and all this and that. And it's like, well, you see the you see the reflection of mind, but. But what what it is is really devotion to following guidance, being spontaneous to to not knowing how it would unfold. Like uh, these last thirty three years with the course, I had no clue. I just gave it over to Jesus and said, "You're in charge now. You you drive. I'm going to get in the passenger seat. You want me to do something? You tell me. You want to speak through me? That's great. Anything you want." You got it. Anything you need, you got it. Anything at all, baby. <laughs> and that's what my my actually was my devotion. And then it all came from that. And I have to say that for those of you who've been hanging in with us online, you are s- such inspirations because we've had examples there of somebody who's working in downtown doing sculpture. We've had a medical doctor. Also, Barbara, Barbara Waterfall from Canada. Uh, we just you mentioned teacher, and here's a teacher yeah. who is lighting up. Barbara, you are lighting up in your mind. You are pouring your heart out here of the transformations of the insights that are happening, and how your students are lighting up, and how you're loving to go there, and even with all the miracles that you're experiencing. Teaching your class, what's beautiful to me is that you still are leaving it open beyond that, even beyond that, to to the prayer of your heart. I'm going to read the prayer that you wrote at the end. I mean, you just wrote a page and a half that just touched our hearts, and I mean, I just was like so filled up reading it. And then you ended it with, and so in this moment, I say this prayer. God, Jesus, the oneness that is God, all that is, I offer myself to you. I am willing, desiring to step into my purpose, that I may do your will. 
May only your will be done for all that truly is. So you've not only, since you've been online with us since the summer, you've not only gone through these huge miracles that are giving you a whole new way to look at your job, at, at the university where you work, even contemplating when I said, say no to the ego, and you've called your workplace the university, the temple of the ego, uh, I say no to that, to the temple of the ego, and now, how beautiful is that? Oh my goodness, <laughs> what the Holy Spirit and Jesus can bring in with that, with that prayer, you are praying for so much. It's like you're opening your mind and you're saying, let the floodgates open up here. I uh, Call it whatever you want, a miracle worker, a teacher of God, you can use any name you want. Call me Barbara. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm going to just be used as the light of the world. And you, you know, I have to say, your devotion to, to hang in there through very, very dark times there was time you mentioned when you were just, we were ready to do an online retreat and you were having suicidal thoughts before the online retreat and you came on the online retreat and it, it calmed your mind, it, it gave you that realization, it's going to be okay. Do all of you know how amazing it is to go from having suicidal thoughts to a state of mind, it's going to be okay? That's the difference between hell and the, and the foothills of heaven. That, that, is, that is the difference between hell, the, the ego saying you need to die, and, and having the hope that you will succeed, and that it is, it is inevitable that you will know your Creator. So, you know, I'm just, I, I've just been looking at all the ones that are writing in, and I just want to thank you again, Barbara, Thank you so much for, for being, above all things, for being so transparent. What you've done, Holly, your transparency, Frank, your transparency, Muna, your transparency, you're just, you are just laying your hearts on the table and you're just saying, here it is, Lord, I, I need escape, I need to know peace and love and joy, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes, and you're putting your hearts on the table. And I'm, I'm actually, there's so many people that are, that are writing in today. Um, Lisbeth, uh, with a broken wrist, I mean, she watched the session. She's here. Lisbeth, oh my gosh, you write this beautiful message today, where we're like, oh my gosh. Lisbeth wrote, what, what a beautiful session we had so far. Yesterday after the movie session, my heart was bursting from love and happiness. Couldn't contain myself. Wanted to sing and dance, but it was 12 in the morning, midnight. <laughs> happiness for no earthly reason. Here I am, I have a broken wrist. I will be operated tomorrow, but I'm miraculously happy! Three exclamation points. And here it is, and it struck me, if I can be happy for no earthly reason, then it is clear that my unhappiness has no earthly reason either. Aha! Got you, ego. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, from the bottom of my heart, my sincere love and gratitude. How glorious, when we start to let go of looking to the world and thinking, the world must bring me happiness. My achievements and my accomplishments must bring me happiness. What I do must bring me happiness. You know, who's around me, the people must bring me my happiness. And start to realize that, oh my gosh, purpose is the only choice. If I accept my purpose, I am the happiness. I am the actual experience of happiness and I will radiate that, I will shine that to everything and everyone because it is my purpose. And to me, these are the witnesses that we're getting. You are showing that you are accepting this purpose and, and this is 
For us, the greatest joy to, to witness that you're doing that. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's miraculous. It is. It is so amazing. I just, yeah, I feel so touched as well because it is, because the, the thing is, Jesus is saying, like, let's just use this body for as long as it takes to keep sharing the message of, of our true joy and our true reality. And, and that is, he is actually sharing it. We don't even have to come up with the message. So it's, it feels so simple. And he actually also says, you know, your experience will always be erratic, meaning that uneven, like um, a little unpredictable. If, if you don't commit to one purpose, so if we commit to, to two, then it's always going to be erratic. And I think what I hear from, from our daily examples or daily life and problems is not that we never had joy. We never experienced these uplifting feelings. We never feel Jesus is guiding us. But it's those darker moments that really stood out to us to say, you know, I've had enough of this. Why there is still this and that? Both are existing in my experience. And I feel like we are worthy to say, not that at all. You know, this is this alone is what I want. Then this alone is what I commit to. This purpose alone is what I commit to. And I feel like, in a way, this weekend is is a taste of that because that's that's exactly what we did. And it's how effortless, you know, yeah. it's not through effort that we give the purpose over to healing to to show up for Jesus. Yeah, it's amazing too that, as I, I come back to it over and over, that purpose is in the mind, and purpose is a decision in your mind, and purpose is not the form. The ego projected the forms out to give all the specific forms its own different purposes. A purpose of a body, a purpose as of, of a car, a purpose of a house, a purpose of, of whatever, a tree, a, a hammer, a saw. The purpose is not in the form. You may seem to have something that's called like a special function where your skills and abilities, like with Lisbeth, your amazing singing voice graced us at the Mystery School. And with many of you, your skills and abilities are touching us and we are so touched by them. But remember, the choice for purpose is coming in your mind. It's not in the form. And the, a good example of that is uh, uh, we had a summer here. Uh, on my birthday I went to, to see some movies, but we were watching some movies and Svava's with us here in the studio and, and she was searching for her purpose. What's my purpose? Jesus, please tell me. What's my life's calling? Please tell me, please show me. And she, mm -hmm. we watched this movie, I think it was called I Could Only Imagine was the name of the movie. We watched it, tears pouring down our face. We watched the whole movie. It was a, about a man finding his calling, his purpose, a big forgiveness lesson with his father in the movie, and then singing this amazing song that went to the top of the charts and it went all around the, the country uh, of the United States as, as like a major hit. And then after the movie, Svava was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know, I've been learning the guitar. I've been starting to take down your songs and everything. I, I finally uh, am now seeing, you're showing me with through this movie that my function is to be, you know, like a singer, songwriter. And maybe we can move the camera over to Svava. And because Jesus said, no, that is not what I'm showing you. No, <laughs> that is not. The, that is not your function. And, and then Svava had to hear what Jesus had to tell her at that point. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, like David said, it was, I've been praying for a function and I had been receiving all these songs. I think within two weeks I received 12 songs and it was day and night. I woke up having them in dreams and, and then we went to see this movie and uh, 
Yeah, and it just came in my mind, oh wow, okay, I get it, Jesus. My function is to be a singer-songwriter. And then Jesus said, no, that is not your function. I said, what? And, uh, <clears throat> and he said, your function is to be a demonstration of love. And I just cried and cried and, yeah, it was, it was so deep for me. Just so much freedom and release, just nothing in form is the function. It's the function is in the mind to be a demonstration of love, to shine and to share and to be the truth of who we are. And, yeah, and every time I get to thinking, oh, I have to be good at singing, good at playing the guitar, and it always comes back to me. No, 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 that is not your function at all. It's, it's to, be, to be love and be light. That, that's, that's everything, just to shine and share and be the truth. So, yeah, I was just so, so grateful for, uh, for that realization. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Clara. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Because this is what we're really talking about. No matter what your body seems to do, you have to remember that you really aren't that body, that that body is, is in your mind along with other, all the other thoughts and concepts you have about this world of time and space. And it's just Jesus integrating your mind and bringing all the thoughts together to show you that happy dream, that quantum field, in your mind, where it's all happening. There's not an external world. You don't have to, you don't have to please people, you don't have to analyze, you don't have to compete. Isn't that great? You don't have to compete? That competition is an ego motive for the body? There's one we haven't talked about. Wow! If you lift that motive of competition off the body, now it's going to feel much better, it's going to feel much lighter, it's going to feel much happier. It'll be carefree and joyful. It will feel that way when you lift competition, analysis, figuring out, problem solving, uh, saving the day. How many of you have projected saving the day on the body? You have to save the day for, for your family, for your parents, for your children. You have to save the day. No, Jesus says only your mind needs salvation. Only your mind needs salvation. And it's only salvaged, he says, through peace. So he tells you what needs to be salvaged, your mind, and which is fragmented and he wants it to be whole. And he tells you it's only done through one means, not through doing, not through processes and everything. It's only done through peace which is the guidance of, of listen and follow. So, this is the key point I want to make. And my friend Eric caught this from, from this weekend. He was saying, I saw that David's saying the purpose is, is in the mind. Eric Archibald, he said, I saw in the mind and it's not found in form. Oh my gosh, we're getting, we're getting really happy now because how many of us have tried to find our function in form? We want to tell Jesus what our function is. Okay, I'll be a good little boy, a good little girl for you, and I'll do, I'll do my Hail Marys, or I'll do this, I'll do service, I'll do all these things. Is it okay? Is that enough? Am I in heaven yet? I'm going to work hard for you. You know, it's really hard, but I'm telling you now, you can't find the purpose in the form. Like, like Svava found out, you know, from Jesus, no, I'm, your purpose, your function is not to be a singer-songwriter, you're to be a demonstration of love. It's like Jesus saying to all of us, I want you to be a demonstration. Give me your hands and your feet, give me your voice, give me your face, your lips, give me your body that I may use it as an instrument for my love, that my love may shine through you and reach through you. Why? So you can see that you're in your mind. That you're not, you've never been a character out there on the screen because the screen isn't out there. As Ken Wapnick taught over and over, there is no out there, out there. <laughs> uh, you know, did you ever see What the Bleep? Uh, do we know, you know, Fred Allen Wolf? Remember the last scene with his wild white hair flying around? He says, don't just take my word for it. Find out for yourself with his white hair flying all around. The last scene of the movie, he's like saying, come on, have some fun. 
get into the quantum field, get into the joy, find your happiness. But it's not to be found in the form, so you don't have to pressure yourself and say, well if I'm not going to be a doctor, or if I'm not going to be a this, or do this, or do that, then I need something else. You want me to, even people do this with teacher of God, or miracle worker, they think, as soon as you say those words, teacher of God and miracle worker, then right away they're thinking, oh, now I've got to write books, and I've got to go talk to people, and do things, whatever David did, and all this and this. No, 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 that's not it either. Your happiness mm -hmm. is you being a teacher of God. Your joy is you being a teacher of God. Your glee is you being a teacher of God. Your attitude is teaching. Your thoughts and your attitude is what Jesus wants you to demonstrate. And He'll direct everything else. You say, well, I'd like to be happy, a joyful teacher of God, but you know, I do have st still things to do. You know, I do have to take care of the body. And Jesus is saying, don't be arrogant now, let me take care of your body. It's just a symbol in your mind anyway. What makes you think I can't take care of your body? You think you can take care of your body better than me, Jesus said? You think I can't use a body and take care of it? Or do you think you need bank accounts and savings and all kinds of apparatus to protect and care for the body, insurance plans and future investments and all kinds of tons of things on earth which actually are part of planning, which is actually reinforcing a body identity, which is what will make the body appear to get sick. When you have a sick mind, then it gets, the guilt gets projected onto the body. So I'm so happy that we're coming to this place of don't even go searching in form to find your function. Go like Joseph Campbell, follow your bliss, go inside, find your joy and have the faith in Jesus to carry you and carry you, carry your mind in that light and love and joy. That's what really this is all about. It's not about trying to find a formula, a linear formula, that you follow the formula. Jesus is saying, no, let your present joy and trust lead the way. I'm excited about this. <laughs> I think we're really getting somewhere now, <laughs> into the mind is what's happening. And I have to say too, what's coming to mind is there's a couple of you from Germany, Vera and Sabine, and, and you both have poured your hearts out to us. Vera, Sabine, you're talking here about one of the most important topics and themes in A Course in Miracles, relationships. That's got to be, if you want a fast track to God, uh, you are right on the middle of, oh Sabine, we're seeing your blue eyes there. <laughs> I mean, you're, forget Sinatra, I'm telling you blue eyes, <laughs> you're, you're blue eyes for God. <laughs> you are ready to, to spring into uh, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, not, you're not singing my, my way anymore, you're going, let thy will be done, I'll do it your way, is what you're saying. But, but right away, let's start off there with Sabine, because you're saying that my question is, I wonder whether I should stay in my relationship or not. Now, has anybody here on the, online today ever had a question about that? Should I stay in a relationship or not? No, there's one. She's saying, never, never, Teresa. <laughs> She's like, we know, we know, Jesus knows that you have had that thought, should I stay or not in a relationship? It seems as there is only form and no content. That's not good, Sabine. That's <laughs> not good. Only form and no content. That's probably why you're asking this question, like, okay, I've gone as far as I could with this form thing, but the love where is the love you said was mine, all oh mine, till the end of time, was it just a lie? Where is the love? Okay, now, you say we don't have any fun together. Again, not good. I've never, I, I can't be in a relationship where I don't have any fun. Considering they're all in my mind anyway, and I'm having fun, then I'm going to have a lot of fun relationships all around the world actually. But it's all in my mind. 
when would we, we would split, so you're already anticipating the split, <laughs> I will also have no work. Okay, so here we, this is perfect. You work together, you're in relationship, it's not fun, there's no love, you say, it's only, it's only form and no content, and then you want me to tell you what to do. Oh boy, <laughs> this is great. This is, this is getting better every day. Okay, Karnak with Sabine supposed to stay in her relationship or not. Now, you know the answer. That's why you're, you're asking me. You're asking me. But I'm t telling you to follow your joy. I'm telling you that Jesus is in your mind, you're in your mind, and that, that you are going to follow your heart to share your joy, expose everything in the unconscious mind, everything without a bit, and you're going to put Jesus in charge of this. And, and I would say if that's really your prayer, if, if that purpose is there, and you've been with us this whole weekend experiencing that it's all in the mind and it's all a decision, it will just dawn on you. It will dawn on you. But, since I'm so practical, and I'm very, very practical, I'm not a big theory guy, I'm just a practical guy, I'm going to call on two people from our studios in Camas. One of them has recently divorced, and one of them got married, in fact in Take Me Home movie, got married, uh, I was in the movie, me marrying the two. These two guys, one of them is just recently divorced, and one of them is, is recently uh, married, we'll say, and, and they, hey, Sabine is right there. She <laughs> is asking the question, uh, she wants to know about this relationship thing. And not only Sabine, Vera, Vera is watching too. And Vera wrote in a lot more. Uh, and Vera's got some real big questions about this relationship thing and, and what should come next in her life. She's really sincere about this as well. So we're going to turn it over to, we're going to go north to the Camus studio. So you're going to hear it right from these two because there they are. <laughs> the ex-husband and the husband, and uh, they can tell you a little bit about this relationship thing from their own experiences. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you, David. Okay. <laughs> David, I have no idea how to follow that up, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's... Well, it's been a beautiful experience for me to uh, actually, yeah, divorce and to break up um, because we've held out the purpose so strongly um, in our marriage. Um, it was for healing and um, yeah, it's so uh, for me, um, I just prayed and prayed um, and continued to just pray and just be, you know, ask for it to be so obvious, you know, with the relationship and and actually, I mean, there was a flip. I mean, our parable was that um, we actually uh, grew closer together and we, um, we got happier together. Um, we started to feel uh, the, the, the strain of the relationship and the pain of the relationship. That just started to really, really fade. Um, and these were all very strong decisions in mind. So, um, yeah, so we... It, it just um, became obvious, and I think the I think the other thing too that is important for me is like our purpose had to be really lined up too. And what I came to feel um, more experientially was that um, our purpose together was very very fulfilling and very fulfilled. And yet, when it came to a next step, it had to be obvious as to whether or not we would have a purpose together and what we did or if we were going to be together. So that was, that was really um, a big key. Like, and that was the obvious, that was the thing that like, dropped in. It was like, oh, well, we can split now. We've, 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 put, we've played our part. We fully 
took this relationship. We healed so much together where we feel, we feel genuine. We feel it, the, the everlasting love with each other. And yet um, our next steps together was not um, going to match up in terms of, um, I mean, we, we live the same purpose, but, but in terms of collaborative purpose, um, that, that was sort of just kind of like, okay, well, it seems like we're going in different directions. So, um, and that was, yeah, that was probably the most clarifying thing for me is that um, we didn't have anything to continue with together. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I can share a little bit. My, my wife is actually in the studio here. She's behind the audience <laughs> here. <laughs> so we are staying together. <laughs> but actually, truthfully, uh, something that I had heard early on, and it was one of the ones that had gone before here in community, just asked a simple question to certain ones. And is this relationship supporting my awakening? Or is it not like what Francis was talking about that really touched me on Friday? It's like, is this bringing me closer to spirit? So there was another book that we uh, that we read here with the Varleys that David speaks about once in a while. And they would come together you know, once a week or every couple of weeks to actually talk about, hey, should we stay together? What's our purpose together? So right now, me and my wife have a strong purpose. In fact, we're going on tour with David and Francis to support the movie, Take Me Home, which is shows a bit of our healing up to our wedding and what we uh, we kind of faced through the process. But it's still being used by the Spirit. In fact, something uh, David said when we got together, because we met in community, was, and uh, it was a nice reflection to go forward in this direction. But this relationship will be used to serve the whole, you know, and it's like, oh, wow. Like even just looking at those things, like, wow, can this actually be used? So it is, it's back to that purpose for our relationship that we continue to put out front and see, you know, is it still serving that purpose? And so, yeah, that was uh, kind of what was coming to me. Mm. Thank you. Thank you both. That's very, very helpful. And we do want to carry it forward because I've just passed along a bit of what Vera was writing in because Vera came back from the Holland retreat and and yeah it was it was uh, Vera was very intense after you returned to Germany from Holland and uh, and uh, I just felt I pass it over to uh, to Francis because we'd like to actually go into this topic a bit. Um, with you, because I hear your prayers. You're really wanting this to be very obvious and very clear, and you you just poured it out. You actually poured it out to us, uh, which is the one thing you're asked to do, is the only thing you're asked to do, is to not hide it and to not keep it in. So Francis mm. will take it, take it in from here. Okay. So I, um, I probably I just read the very last mm-hmm. bit. Vera, you're saying, I'm tired of all the fear I have, and in the special, the fear that I feel when my partner or anybody else I love refuses me so badly. How can I handle this? With the gentle help of the Holy Spirit, finally in an easier way. That's so beautifully put because... um, Yeah, when I read this, first and foremost, I want to say this is like um, a pain that we, as humans, we all carry in our hearts. Like this this pain of feeling the love that we, if we open our heart, you know, the rejection. Because, you know, Jesus actually says that the, the pain of separation is the only pain that you that you're experiencing or you need to heal. But in the experience of the daily life, this feeling of rejection and being rejected of love, and this love is not flowing somehow, it's not received, it's just so enormous. And I I just, David mentioned yesterday about this movie, uh, The Joker. Actually, he is such a valent character, and yet... In that movie, it's almost like a character study. The the beginning of his life is almost being triggered by those tiny little things in the world. Something misunderstood him. There was no love when he opens his heart to playfulness. It was so hard. And 
and I really resonate with that because I I do I feel like it is in those tiny things we all actually are so sensitive. We're so sensitive to the lack of love. It's not normal to our mind. It feels enormous, and yet, oh, I feel like. But somehow in the ego, it's just like not okay to feel that, you know. But this is like a shared experience. This sensitivity, whenever there is a lack of love, so that's why I kind of really enjoy that movie because I feel that's exactly what human experience is like. It 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 feels like it's this. Moments of lack of love that's been perceived, and it's in the relationship, it's in the the so-called perceptual world. But I think the the hope of this course and and this retreat is that you know let's bring back where the love is truly lacking. And it is in the mind, and it is in the spirit that we can experience, and in the relationship, especially in the special relationship that you're touching on. Why is that feeling so intense in a relationship that that we're close to, in the relationship that we, you know, in the intimate relationship, especially, we we have to put the mask down. That's that's that is somehow where there is a security, there is a closeness, and there is an intimacy, and we allow ourselves to put the mask down. Normally, in those kind of relationships, and then the moment that we put our mask down, all of this, all of this insecurity and vulnerability come up, and if the purpose of those relationship is not in support. Of facing those and releasing those with the help of the spirit, if if the purpose of the relationship start to become accusing each other and asking why don't you give me what I'm lacking in feeling this way, and build up expectations and build up this 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 thing, then it actually just gonna go toward that direction of being still in the loop of. Facilitating the lack of love in our experience. So Jesus actually says, in order to achieve the goal, you have to go toward that direction. It's as simple as that. Not to go against the direction of the Holy Spirit's purpose. Any direction that we 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 go toward in our relationships, in the ego's relationships, to use the relationship for the purpose of. Providing us security, providing us a sense of、um, self-worth and self-specialness, a sense of identity that is just going against the direction. So, I think Vera, I, I, I remember when I met you in Holland. You actually came to me. You said to me that you said、um, I, I, I found out about David three weeks ago and.、Um, I'm, I'm, I saw you on YouTube, and you were interviewed by this Swedish guy about this particular project. And I said, "What Swedish guy? I don't. I, I'm not interviewed by any Swedish guy." And you were like, "Yeah, yeah, you are." And then in the end, I realized it's a Danish guy that you're talking about, the Soren, <laughs> that you watched that particular、uh, interview that he and I were talking about using a project,、uh, making the movie of "Take Me Home." And how we really work, and it, and the project itself is so it's so set for that direction. Like the project is used for that purpose, and there was no other purpose. So the closeness that we feel is because, like Jeffrey just mentioned, because we want to use everything to be closer to the spirit. So we want to use our relationship to be closer to the spirit. And in the end, we did feel very close to the spirit and to ourselves. It was so actually funny because、um, I think Soren was talking with some other、uh, course teacher at one point, and 
and then uh, talking about his experience with me and making the movie. And the other teacher said, "Is she、um, Francis in a relationship?" Soren said, "Yeah, yeah, she's、uh, she has a partner." And then, "Are you in a relationship with her?" "Yeah, yeah, I am, very deep." And the teacher's like, "What's that?" <laughs> and then Soren's like, "It's love. It's very loving." <laughs> But it's like, what, "What is what is going on?" But it's. You know the the relationship that that two bodies seem to to have is so much defined into boxes of、oh, what is because it, relationship outside of an intimate relationship. How can there be love there? That doesn't make any sense. You can't love someone the same as the one that you're in an intimate relationship. But I feel like this pathway.、Um, And following this is healing this this central feeling that as a human being and separate body, the mind is feeling this lack of love everywhere it looks, and the fear of rejection, the fear of experiencing that, and and the toward this goal, what happens is is that we. Started to realize we can feel this kind of love everywhere. With the intimate relationship partner, with someone I collaborate right here in the studio with projects, and even the ones I think of, my ex-husband. I don't see him. I think of him. There was the exact same experience. So I would say that that is the goal. And that is happening, and it's not strange. It's actually the most natural thing. But just from your question, I just want to acknowledge that it's not you're not alone in feeling that way, in this fear of being rejected. And actually,、um, in the movie "Take Me Home," I think you already saw it in the Holland retreat. That's that's exactly what people bear. Um, they're hard out to 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 show. This is this is what we're here to heal. This this sense of lack of love. Yeah, it's so beautiful because this what Vera, what you're sharing, and, and Sabine, I haven't forgot about you with the blue eyes.、Uh, <laughs> we're coming back because we're going to use purpose is the only choice. We're taking our topic for the day. It's in the mind. It's a decision, and now we're going to bring it together with. Relationships. We're going to take the most profound topic in all of time and space. Purpose, which is the purpose that sets you free, sets you back into eternity. We're going to move it right into the topic for the next half hour of relationships with Sabine and Vera leading the way for all of us. Because this is for all of us. We're going to demystify in half an hour. The one thing that the ego does not want demystified. Why does Jesus spend nine chapters or eight or nine chapters in what is it from fifteen to twenty-four in his course talking about special relationships and holy relationships? There is no topic that gets nine chapters except for relationships. Now, right here, all of us together with our last half an hour together, I'm going to. Unlock the keys to every single relationship issue that you've ever had, with a partner, with a mother, with a father, with children, with your neighbor, Sylvia. We're going after the whole kit and caboodle in the next half an hour, and we're going to use Sabine and Vera to do this because they have volunteered. <laughs> they have poured their hearts out. Okay, Sabine, we'll come back to you. Sabine, you wrote that it, the, the relationship seems to be form and no content, and yet you know in your heart after the Holland retreat that it needs to be about content and not the form. <laughs> in other words, the form should be irrelevant, and the content—the content is love. I'm talking about agape love. I'm talking about unconditional love, like Francis said, a love of everyone. A love of everyone and everything, including the ones you think of, 
That's a, such a big love that it can swoop and take in Hitler, Osama bin Laden. This is kind of big love, you know, it's like, oh, there's no Judas, no problem. It just swoops, it's so big, the darkness cannot hide, the big love is coming. It's agape love, it's the love of, of God. And you wrote in your question that at the very end you said, well, if we part, then I lose my, my job. I thought, I, was, I noticed that when you said, if we part. So there's just another option. You're giving this all over to Spirit, and you did mention that if we part, then I lose my job. So I, I noticed that you mentioned that in there. So to me, that's showing that, that somehow there's an economic concern, or there's an econ perhaps an economic concern that's still underneath this decision. But remember, if purpose is the only choice, if, if you're going to decide for joy, for happiness, for love, to shine your light, regardless of whoever, wherever, whatever, and this concern is still coming up, then that's perfect. See, you've done just what Vera did. You've actually gave it away in that line where you said, if we part, then I lose my job. So, ultimately, you can see trust would settle every problem now. It's like, in order for you to really open up to the guidance, the guidance can't come if there's fear. You know, we need to be able to, we don't have to have our mind completely purified, but even for a moment we have to come to that still open point where we invite the miracle, we invite the guidance to come in. And just by you saying, if we split, I'm, I will lose my job, you've exposed the fear, right there in that one sentence. So, it's kind of like, that is really important because that's where the trust comes in. How many of you watching online can relate to what Sabine's talking about? Have you ever felt about staying in a partnership where you had a financial concern about what would happen to you in the future? Uh, if you were apart. That's important because in the end, if we're going to follow this purpose and we have this fear of consequences, fear of, of what may happen if it looks this way, fear of what may happen to me financially, will this body be able to survive? Will this body be able to enjoy this world? You know, that, that is a very deep, profound question because I would say that's a question of faith. That's a question where, where really it's the Spirit is saying, have faith in me. I, I, let me guide you for your happiness, but if you're going to use these past fears and doubts to block my guidance, then the Spirit's saying, I have to wait. I'm, I can't force my guidance on you. I have to have you face those fears. And I would say the Spirit knows the, what's in your best interest. The, the Spirit knows exactly who you have to meet, where you have to go, where you have to live, everything about it to, for you to free your mind. Like Morpheus tells Neo, I'm here to free your mind. That's what you want. So that's why I'm saying you really do know the answer to this. It's zooming into you more and more because it's a question of, of your faith. If you really have the faith in the Spirit to carry you, then it ceases to become, these, these are not difficult questions. Like Greg and, and Jeffrey were talking about, they were both saying it's, it, it became obvious. For Greg it became very obvious, for Jeffrey it became very obvious, for all of us it becomes very, very obvious. Now, let's go to Vera. Let's go, <laughs> uh, we've solved, solved that there. Vera, like Basically, the reason that the fear is coming up, again, it's, it's fear of consequences, fear of uh, rocking the boat, uh, fear of what other people will say, fear of what other people will think, um, fear of perhaps there's economic things tied in there, perhaps there, you know, we're really starting to say, wow, the only thing that's holding me back from really knowing what the guidance is is there's some interference patterns that are going on in my mind that are making it difficult for me to connect with the Holy Spirit and Jesus. And these interference patterns are all based on what? 
the past. It's past learning. All of those boxes that, that Francis was talking about, you know, how we have all these boxes, and with Soren, Soren's like, ah, do I have a relationship with Francis? I sure do. <laughs> but the interviewer said, but, uh, well, wait a minute, but Francis is in a relationship. Francis has a partner, and you're in, what's going on? It's like you could just see the ego going on in the interviewer's mind. Oh, it's a triangle. Oh, I always <laughs> knew there was something weird about those people. And da, 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 da. You know, no, no, no. No, no, no. Let's get clear here. I've got 25 minutes left to wipe the ego out for good. Let's, let's stay with it here. So, if all those boxes of relationships are based on the past, you know, they're a couple, and they're uh, heterosexual, and bisexual, homosexual, blah, 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 more category. No, no. It's all past learning. It's all past learning. Married? Are they married or divorced? What's their marital status? Past learning. Marital, past, single, past, 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 past. And then the ego says, that's all real, so you better figure it out. You better analyze it and figure out what you are. Are you, are you homosexual? Are you heterosexual? Are you this? Are you with somebody? Are you not? What's your category? Are you asexual? I, I came across that term because uh, I heard Bill Thetford, they said at the end of his life he was asexual. And I said, asexual? Is that what, like non-sexual? And it's like these are people that generally go around and they they're walking around on earth and they, they, psychologists are saying it's okay to be asexual now because that means you don't have these thoughts and feelings. You still have these attractions that come through, but you don't feel a need to act on the attractions. Oh my God, there's another, I thought I had the categories down pat. Asexual, bisexual, homosexual, which fluids go in here and come out there and I thought I was trying to figure this sexuality box. That's probably why I gave up being a psychologist and turned to be a teacher of God and gave my mind under the control of Jesus because I could never figure out the categories and who's right, and who's wrong, and who's going to heaven and who's going to hell because of this fluid going there and that fluid going there. Listen, let's really simplify this. Let's just take the ego out of this altogether. If you have a purpose right now and it's your decision for happiness, and you are willing to lay aside all of these past boxes and learning, and just say, hmm, maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know what's best for me. Maybe I don't know, but maybe there is one inside of me, within me, who does know. Who knows the way out of the labyrinth, and out of time and space, and back to eternity. Maybe there is one who does know. and." That one is with me. That one loved me. What's the thing? Impel, overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming appeal. appeal. That one is looking on you going with overwhelming appeal. <laughs> oh, Vera, you just want love. You don't want fear. You want love. Now, the way I'm going to dismantle the, the ego and all of this uh, stuff about, about relationship, which is so complex, it's too complex, here we are. Purpose is the only choice. It's in the mind. It's now. It's going to, as zoom, 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 we're coming in really quick to the holy instant. And I don't know, do you and Sabine, do you have any interest in science? Do you have any interest in science? Do you know anything about science? Well, I think I'm going to use science to, to help clarify this for you because, because it's the best if you use something you know nothing about. Okay? <laughs> So I'm going to use science to help you uh, come to your answer. Because when I talk about religion, everybody knows so much about religion. Well, my religion says if you get married, you can't do this, you can't get divorced, you can't do this, you, can't, you have to get an annulment. Blah, blah. Now, we're going to leave religion out of this, theology out of this, and I'm strictly going to undo the ego complexities around relationship by saying purpose is the only choice, it's in the mind, and the difference between the way you've been thinking about your relationship and your difficulties, it, the reason you have fear is because you are thinking of your relationships, some of you like science in this room, you've been thinking Newtonian. 
You've been thinking Newtonian, Newtonian physics. You know Isaac Newton? That's linear, I'll tell you about, you haven't heard of him. Isaac Newton believed that you could study this world and do experiments on the world and do deductions, you could draw conclusions, you could build a science based on the empirical evidence of, of form. He basically, that was his underlying present, premise, was I will study form using a very good method, the scientific method, and I will experiment and do thousands, millions of experiments on the form, and I will deduce my understanding of how, what the world is and what is the nature of reality from experimenting on the physical world, the world of form, and deducing, getting my things. And that's what you're doing, that's why you're having your relationship difficulties, is because you're going to have to check out Isaac Newton and Newtonian, because, because the reason you have fear and these questions about your relationship is because you're still in Newtonian thinking. You're still thinking of relationships in terms of bodies. Jesus actually doesn't think of relationship in terms of bodies. In fact, Jesus says that under the Holy Spirit's teaching, every relationship is holy. And he means every. When Jesus says every, Jesus means every. Under the Holy Spirit's teaching, every relationship is holy. There aren't the unholy ones, you know, the, the evil ones over there, and then the good ones over here, the Saddam Husseins and Hitlers over here, and the Mother Teresas and St. Francis's over here. Oh no, under the Holy Spirit's teaching, every relationship is holy. We, something resonates about that. It's not very Newtonian though. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Jesus is saying, you're going to have to let go of everything you've learned about from the past about relationship in order to what? Come into agape, unconditional love. In order to love everyone, you're going to have to start to see them beyond the body. You're going to have to trust Jesus that you would want to see them sinless. You would want to see them innocent. He's not even going to tell you, pretend they're not there. He's going to say, do I wish to see him sinless? Do I wish to see my partner, my brother, my sister, everyone sinless? Now, Newtonian is very linear because it keeps studying the timeline and it tells you what you should believe about relationship based on what? The timeline, the empiricism, based on what your five senses are showing you. And Jesus says you will never reach the kingdom of heaven, if you keep following the evidence from those five senses, because they're always showing you differences, and you have ego preferences, I prefer these kinds of bodies, and I like this one, so I like, I like the blondes better than brunettes, and I like this, brown eyes, and blue eyes, and I like this shape versus that shape, and preferences, preferences, ooh, those ego preferences are, are they neutral? No, they're judgments. Preferences or judgments, and what if the agape love doesn't have any preference for any form? What if that agape love is just, ooh, it's so huge, it swallows up Hitler, it swallows up, it swallows up evil. It can handle anything the ego can throw because this love is so big, so from God, so all-encompassing, it can handle anything. Now, if you're following me from science, Isaac Newton, it was all based on the timeline. Jesus is saying, no, let's go intuitive. Let's go internal to your higher self, your higher power. And what if that higher power was going to use relationships as just symbols in the mind through collaborations and miracles and collaborative projects and what if even this experience we're having now, as a whole group of us online this weekend, is just a quantum experience where Jesus is using all the symbols and the words and the bodies and one big giant quantum experience. What if Jesus has just shifted gear out of mm. Newtonian, he's cranked it up to quantum 
we're going down the rabbit hole with relationships. We want to see all relationships equally in terms of love. Now there's a part in the course that's, there's a line in the course that, oh, the ego does not even believe that Jesus could put such a line in there because it's so much of a, of a release point. Jesus is basically saying in the course, if you have a purpose that you would not share with everyone equally, then it's a special purpose. If you have a purpose that you would just share with one body or several bodies or or a number of bodies that you wouldn't share with all the bodies, it's specialness. Now, what is the one purpose that you could honestly say that you could share with every single body in your mind? I'd say it's forgiveness. I'd say there is a purpose, and I've been talking about it all weekend, there's the one purpose that you can share with everybody with no concern about leaving somebody out, or no concern about, oh, I'm going to forgive this one, but I better don't tell so-and-so over there, I'm going to forgive because ooh, they're going to be upset that they're excluded. No, you need the same purpose in this moment, in your mind, that will unify perception in a quantum way and will take you out of Newtonian altogether. Because Isaac Newton was just postulating. He thought the nature of reality depended on physicality. And how many people have, do you know, maybe even yourself, who, who, when you talk about reality, you're talking about the world. Or when somebody comes up and you start talking about love and oneness and happiness and joy, they go, get real. What does that mean, get real? Let's get physical, physical. And listen, I'm sorry, I, I do not agree with that. Let's get spiritual, spiritual. I want to get spiritual. Let's get into spiritual. Let me hear your spirit talk. Your spirit talk. Let me hear your spirit talk. Let's get vertical, <laughs> vertical, not horizontal. <laughs> That's Newtonian. We're going quantum. Let's get vertical, vertical. I want to get vertical. Let's get into vertical. Now, Vera, if you don't know science, it's great because I think you are so fortunate to not know science <laughs> because you don't have to unlearn all of this linear Newtonian crap uh, that is all of history. But, if you want to really enjoy science, you type in quantum mechanics. You type in into your Google. You type in quantum physics. You type in quantum theory. What's our friend Marge, Margie from... Mara. From quantum, she was talking about mechanics. Quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, you know. You contact her up there in Holland, where you were when you met us, and you ask her a little bit about quantum mechanics, because she'll talk to you about that crack, and she'll talk to you about going vertical, and if you apply quantum physics to your relationships, this is not just for Vera, this is for all of us now. <laughs> if you apply quantum physics to your relationships, you're going to be so happy I'm talking about so happy. Why will you be so happy? Because you won't have guilt, you won't have any shame, you won't have any inclusion, exclusion issues, you won't even know what infidelity even means. If you have fidelity to the purpose in your mind of forgiveness, purpose is the only choice, you're not even going to know what the word infidelity means. That's a linear that's a, that, that is Newtonian all the way. So, can Soren fall deeply in love with Francis while Francis is deeply in love with JP <laughs> in Newtonian language? That's a no-no. That's a big no-no. That means Soren should back off. Back off. And let JP and Francis have their relationship 
And Soren's out. He's out in the cold. He's a goner. He's not, he can say, oh yeah, you can tell the interviewer I'm in relationship uh, with Francis, but the, the interviewer's going, ha ha. She's with JP. Ha ha ha. Soren, he doesn't realize it. Two's company, three's a crowd, and you're out. You know, that's what all the love songs, you know, say, you know, two is a good number for relationship. Three is what? Ooh, don't touch that dial, don't touch that pole. Because from Newtonian perspective, a relationship is between two. You know, Jesus would say that is a bunch of baloney. Absolute baloney, because love is about oneness. Love is about, we're all in this together. Love is about, about everyone is included in this love, and no one is excluded. But love is not about form, as we come back to Sabine. Love is content. Jesus says that actually in A Course in Miracles. He says, love is content and not form of any kind. Okay, are we really ready to go for purpose is the only choice? That's from Jesus. Love is content and not form of any kind. And Sabine, you were just telling me, in, when you wrote it in, you said, this relationship that I seem to be in is all form and no content. And then Jesus is saying, wait a minute, no, love is content and no form of any kind. So, oh, now we're, we're really releasing the whole human race now. We are actually using these final ten minutes now with you, you are, you are more important than Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Sabine and Vera are now. We saw the movie yesterday. That's probably the most famous scene. The balcony. That's right. Sabine and Vera are taking down the ego for once and for all. Because in the movie, remember, Romeo is at the bottom. Juliet's up on the balcony, and they can't touch. Jesus is like, "Oh, come on. We can do better than that." If you share my purpose, and you go quantum, you go vertical instead of horizontal and Newtonian, you will learn that love is all-inclusive. You will learn that the only way you can love is through the love of God and the love that Christ is. He's even got a workbook lesson where he says, there is no love but God's. You believe in different kinds of love. Remember all those categories? Are they together? Are they apart? Are they married? Are they divorced? What's their sexuality? Is it bisexual, asexual, homosexual, transsexual? What is going on over here with all these categories? Jesus is like saying, he says it in the workbook. Oh, no, no, no. You think that there, you believe there's different kinds of love. There isn't. There's one God, there's one Christ, there's one Son of God, and that Son is neither male nor female. That Son is Spirit, that God is Spirit, that's who you are, that's what love is, and everything else isn't. Newtonian is gone. Quantum. If some of you are not scientists, you need to go look up quantum mechanics. You need to look up the quantum field. There's, that's a nice experiment for you at the end of this retreat. You still have some relationship issues that are going on, you still have some grievances, you're still struggling in your relationships. Look up the quantum field. Type those words into Google, quantum field. And then take what the scientists are sharing in there, put it together what Jesus is sharing in A Course in Miracles, and you will become indescribably happy indescribably joyful, because you finally will realize that you don't have to compromise. Like Francis was saying, the only compromise is trying to hold on to those boxes. The only compromise is trying to hold on to the specialness. The specialness is linear time, right? We're down to the, the noodle. Uh, you know, a spaghetti noodle. I've talked about this for years. It's a spaghetti noodle. Are you going to be on the line and suffering? Or are you going to go into the point? Are you going to turn that noodle around, look right down at the point, and are you going to dive into the point, or are you going to keep playing with these time symbols that the ego wants to use? 
It's all about whether you put faith in the body or not. Again, I'll say it again, at no single instant does the body exist at all. It is always remembered the past or anticipated the future. You see, that's what Newtonian physics is about, that's what the ego's invention of fictitious linear time is about, and that's what blocks you from the holy instant and going vertical straight up into eternity, straight up into the everlasting, straight up into the love that you've always known is real and true, the love that never rejects, never abandons, never turns away. That love is always there for you. Mm. So there you go. We, we even did that with five minutes to go. I, I just used a little uh, science in there. And if you can apply your science to your relationships, you, I guarantee you, you will come to purpose being the only choice and it being in the mind. That is, I think, the promise of Jesus that we can experience the kind of closeness, intimacy, and love in absolutely everything, just like this weekend. You know, what we're experiencing with each other is the potential that we can have with absolutely everybody, including the partners, including the intimate partners in our lives, but not limited to that, you know, to absolutely everything. So I just feel like, yeah, this is, David is just setting up this, this bar, you know, let's just, knowing it's, it's the undoing of all the boxes. I feel like that's, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful. Because I, you know, when, when Soren and I had this beautiful collaboration and my heart was so open and I would tell JP, I said, I'm so in love with Soren. And he's like, that's so beautiful. There was absolutely zero jealousy. And then if I asked him, he would say, of course you should be in love with Soren. Of course. You should be, you deserve feeling that way all the time. And that is the kind of, that's the kind of support that is what we're, we're feeling. You know, we should open up to everybody and yeah. have that experience completely be directed by Jesus, by giving this purpose over to Jesus. That's that, a reflection. That was a mirroring back yeah. of, of it's perfectly wonderful that you're in love. Is it, wouldn't it be great if that's the all kind of re reflections you got back is you're perfectly, wonderfully acceptable being in love with, with everyone and not holding on to those boxes from the past, which is really not... We don't find the I am presence by adhering to the past and, and holding on to the guilt of who's included, who's excluded, you know, all this idea, even that ultimately the systems of morality and, and ethics and everything, as long as they're still tainted by the past, they're still defenses against the holy instant. There are some helpful reflections in morality and ethics, but that's only to the extent that they value a sense of, of acceptance and non-judgment. You know, as long as it's behaviors, what you can do, what you can't do, you see it's still pointing at the body and the behaviors if the system is completely based on that. But any kind of system that leads you to integrity, that leads you to honesty, that leads you to a sense of transparency and trust, anything that spirit can use to take you into that state of mind is, is helpful. And so I did hear, Pete was saying, and, and the crew here was saying that, that actually we're going to be we have another topic for the online retreat, and what could we possibly lead into following purpose is the only choice? What, what topic, what theme for our next online retreat? How could we possibly even follow this up? What is that topic? Pete, you want to come over here and sit down and... Linda can show. Pete actually is going to announce, maybe this was Nicholas's job, but, <laughs> but we're, we've, we're throwing it in here. But what is it that we would follow up purpose is the only choice, choice with? Yeah, we're going to go into the forgiven world. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, we just really felt it like it was just like a, a heart calling just after this, after this theme of purpose is the only choice. It's like really the experience we're calling for of a totally forgiven world. So when we were feeling it, we felt it was such a, a brightness, you know, like, oh, yes, that's what I want to perceive. That's what I want for my, myself. That's what I want to feel, the forgiven world. So, yeah, that's going to be our next online retreat in uh, the beginning of December. Uh, December what to what? Six to eight. Six to eight. And uh, we do actually have a, a promo video. If we could play that now. Is that okay. a good time now or should we play it after? After we blow all of our hugs and kisses. Yeah, here, we can we play have it at the to, end. Yeah, we have, to, we have to share all of our love through our blessing. Because <laughs> my heart just goes out to all of you for, for joining with me and joining with all of us and sharing this because this is so dear, you know, we're, this is not, um, you know, there's a part in the Course where Jesus says, this Course is not a play of ideas. Ooh, not a play of ideas. He also says in the Course that you actually have to let go of the theology of this Course. What? He said that? He put that in the book? He also says in Lesson 189, forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy empty hands unto your God. Uh-oh, we look like we're looking for the real world, we're looking for the happy dream. This isn't your Course in Miracles study group, this is your mind calling you into going beyond those eyes, moving over that book for decades, and actually opening up into an experience that Christ, that Holy Spirit, want to offer you in the holy instant. So, to me, this is, I am so filled with, with joy, and, and also, we were talking about the turtles, like, relax, just, like just zoom into your mind, zoom, zoom into your decision, and relax and let purpose be shown to you. This isn't about trying to make ch external changes, you know, and, and changing and putting all your colored clothes away, and now you're just going to wear white, and you're just going to dress in white clothes all the time, because you're a saint. <laughs> and this isn't about just saying, I'm going to click my heels together and twinkle my nose like in Bewitched, and, and just say, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, that you don't look for any shortcuts with this journey. Don't look for things in form to do, words to say that are going to be the shortcut. Don't look for magical healing cures in form. Pray, go to your closet like Jesus said in the Bible and pray and pray for guidance, pray to join your purpose right here and right now, and then relax, become so still and so relaxed because the Spirit will take care of everything. The Spirit will take care of what you thought was the future, the Spirit will clean up anything you thought was the past, the Spirit will inspire you with fun and happiness and joy, which is your contribution in the plan is your present happiness, is your contribution, and you can really relax into that and know that you are deeply loved from that experience. You will feel that experience. So, before we go into the whatever, the promo video for whatever is to come in the imaginary future, you can... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the truth. So, you, we're just going to say, we love you, we want to blow all of our kisses from here in the studio, from Camus, we want to share all this love and happiness, we want to say we're with you all the way, and, and we walk together on the self-same road, and there, we will not fail, we cannot fail, happiness and love are inevitable, and we love you, and uh, there, Roberto, you, you've been messaging me the whole time on my phone. I love you. I don't know what you wrote, but I could feel your love vibes coming all the way from Brazil. <laughs> 
beyond the words, I can feel your heart. <laughs> and I'll see you soon, my dear friend. Francis and I and Svava are coming your way with, with Jeffrey. So thank you. Adios amigos <laughs> from Mexico. Oh. 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 Oh, oh. <laughs> from Holland. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you from Camus. Thank you, everybody in Camus. Thank you for being a part of this. <laughs>